Hello there, my name is Sonia Chaudhry and I'm an intern at the Westford Museum, an upcoming senior at Westford Academy and the president of the Westford Museum Club. Today I'll be talking to Jeff Hall, one of our current Westford Academy trustees and a member of the Westford Historical Society. As an active member of our town, Mr. Hall has interviewed a plethora of people. However, this time we'll be switching roles and I'll be interviewing him about his past and what led him to his role as trustee as well as his various contributions while he was on the board. Mr. Hall, you're renowned for your dedication to Westford and have lived here all your life. How long has your family had roots in Westford? Boy, Sonia, uh, my family came to Westford at the turn of the 20th century. Uh, the exact year, I'm not sure. My grandmother was already living here. Her name was Hughes, uh, but uh, and she lived in the Graniteville section of, of town at the time. When my grandfather um, and some of his brothers began to move into Westford, into the Graniteville section, they did so specifically to go to work at CG Sargent's. Now, as you were growing up, what parts of the town really stuck out to you? Well, of course, Graniteville did. I yeah. was a Graniteville guy. And, you know, back uh, when I grew up in the 50s uh, and 60s, um, we were much more of a parochial community. For example, um, I went to the sergeant school. Um, my mom shopped almost every day at uh, the Clover Farm store that was run by the Reeveses. Uh, became the hardware store, some people might remember that. Um, so all of our activities were right there in Graniteville. Uh, I didn't really get to meet other kids from town unless it was involved in Little League or um, until I reached sixth grade and ended up going to the Rodenbush in sixth grade to sixth and seventh grade. Got to meet kids from Parker Village, um, get to meet more kids from Forge Village. Um, but yeah, Graniteville. And so you mentioned that you went to Rodenbush for sixth and seventh grade. Does yes. that mean you went to a different school for eighth all the way to 12th grade? Yeah. Well, uh, Sergeant School, when I entered in 1954, was grades one through eight. The town was growing. The Abbott School, which opened in 1955, uh, actually opened grade seven through 12 at that time. By the time I got to be, um, it, it was grades one through six, then it was grades one through five at Sargent. And as we got to the late 1950s, one through five, and sixth grade was moved up to the Rodenbush. By the time I got to the Rodenbush as a sixth grader, they had moved the seventh grade out of the um, the academy. And so I ended up with seventh grade at the Rodenbush also. So when I started Westford Academy, I started in the eighth grade. This is at the old Abbott, okay, the middle school now. And there was probably some 450, 500 kids in the school at the time, probably closer to 450, I think, grades eight through 12. And this included students from all over Westford by all this time? All over Westford, yeah, all over Westford at the time. The interesting part of that, Sonia, is today, if you go to a graduation senior class, your senior class has over 400. Yeah. yeah. That's how, gives you an idea how much the town's grown in that time. So while you were at Westford Academy, what sort of clubs and sports were you involved in? Okay, uh, well, my, <laughs> I like to say the Hall, the Hall family was best known for its uh, wrestling. I had three brothers that were state champions. My brother Roger three times, Jimmy twice, and my brother Billy once. Roger was a New England champion at the time. I wasn't a state champion. <laughs> but I did wrestle in my junior and senior years. I also was involved in government to a certain extent. I was president of my class in the eighth and ninth grade, was involved with a group called the Student Improvement Association, also as a senior, those sorts of things, yeah. So when did you graduate Westford Academy? I was uh, graduated from Westford Academy June 3rd, 1966. Interesting fact, my granddaughter Cameron graduated exactly 50 years to the date, June 3rd, 2016. Wow. <laughs> now, looking back at the five years that you spent in the same school, do you have any favorite memories that stick out to you? Well, as I said, you know, the, the time I spent going to a lot of the football games, basketball games, of course, the wrestling meets because the family was so involved. That was really, really special. The, before the football games, uh, there was the annual bonfire that we used to have. It's a pep rally that the night before and that's in the parking lot next to the um the abbott school 
and that was always a very special time. Uh, the school dances, uh, record hops at the time, those were, those were special. So those sorts of activities around surrounding the school um, were always very special to me. How many school dances did you have a year? Well, each class at the time ran a couple of school dances, and then maybe uh, the student council might run it one or two. So used quite frequently, there were a lot of dances, a lot of dances at the high school at the time. Also at the time, um, different clubs in, in town, for example, the Fletcher Club, uh, during the summers, ran dances on Tuesday night. The Elks Club in in Forge Village ran them on Friday nights. Murray's Hall, which is long gone since 1980, had Friday night dances. So record hops were big at the time. I can remember the CYO back in the 1960s running an outside dance in the parking lot next to where St. Catharines is today. So. It's amazing to see uh, how much Westford Academy and its culture has changed because nowadays we have two dances throughout your entire high school career. You have Cattill and you have prom. Yeah. We didn't have a Cattill, but we had a prom. Yeah. Okay. But that was, but, but as I said, those were dances, you know, they had a band and they weren't at the school either. My prom in, in my class, 1966, was the last one to have the prom actually in the gymnasium at the Abbott School. After that, it was moved off campus. And we didn't gather on the common like they do today. So after you graduated WA, what did you major in or pursue in college? Well, I always wanted to be a school teacher. I kind of got that um, impression from, uh, uh, I was kind of influenced by a guy by the name of Ralph Brinkwater, who was my seventh grade English teacher. I enjoyed his style. Uh, and then in the eighth grade, I um, really took an interest in United States history. So I knew I wanted to teach. I started at Lowell State in 1966, but transferred to Salem because I wanted to teach secondary school. I ended up, uh, graduated in 1970 from Salem, and I did my student teaching in the town of Chumpsford and was hired by the town of Chumpsford to teach um, well, middle school, actually, eighth and ninth grade. And I was an eighth grade teacher for years teaching U.S. history. Uh, next, I want to talk a little about, bit about your everyday life. Is it true that you used to live in the call center? <laughs> well, I was married in 1970. Uh, we had three children. And my wife at the time, uh, my first wife, Marilyn, got the job as the dispatcher for the fire department. The dispatching was done in what we know today as the cottage next to the museum where the Historical Society is located. So yes, we lived there from uh, December of 1975 until the end of October in 1978 when I bought my house in Forge Village for $31,000. Wow. <laughs> I put a garage on in 2004 for $31,000. <laughs> Times change. Besides working as a teacher, what were some of the local committees you were involved in? Well, geez, it was interesting. In the early 70s, I, um, I was involved uh, with something called the Drug Action Committee. I happened to be talking to one of the selectmen and talking about, you know, geez, there's a drug problem in the community, and he, he directed me. So uh, me and um, one of my friends, who was also an up-and-coming school teacher, got on that committee. During the 70s, I was busy raising my family at, at the time, and the kids were small. So I really didn't become involved again in town government until the early 1980s. I, I worked on a couple of... Uh, Selectman's campaigns. Uh, my cousin Dennis Stewart ran in 1979 for a selectman. I helped him out. But I got involved in the early 80s uh, once again, actually with a local group that was kind of fighting the tax rate in town because we had gone to something called full and fair classification. From there, I kind of became a leader in that group and I was pushed to run for selectman, which I did in 1983. Uh, and then there were subcommittees after that, Housing Authority from 1989 until 1992, and then, of course, my venture as a state representative in 1990, and I was there until 2008. Wow, so you've done a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. throughout. Yeah, it's kept, kept, me, kept me busy, but 
as I said, you know, I I had this thing about I liked government. I, I got involved in the, the same reason I went into teaching. I, I like people. And uh, there was a representative at the time by the name of Phil Peralt um, that was somebody that I can remember my dad and other people saying, geez, if you need something, you know, we'll call Peralt and he should be able to help you. And I wanted to be able to help people. You know, somebody called and said, geez, I got a problem here. Can you, get, can you, can you help me out? Whether it be a, a, a street light out or you know, something problem with the registry of motor vehicles, anything like that. And there were some others that were much deeper than that that I would, would get into, but I wanted to help people, and that's why I get into that. And so would you say that that was the defining motivation for you oh, in your role as state representative, selectman? Ab- absolutely. Constituent work, yes, absolutely. Although I was involved in some major major things that did happen at the state house. It, my district time when, when Fort Devens closed, I was part of putting together what's called the Devens Enterprise Commission. It brought in a lot of industry and businesses and residential to what the old fort that was up there. I active with the educational committee. We saw, I, I, I knew that my biggest concern was making sure my town got what it deserved in terms of money. So um, I worked with several of my colleagues to make sure the high growth communities like Westford was in the 90 got its fair share. Those are just a few. I could list many. Yeah. <laughs> so what were some of your challenges as state representative? Oh boy, time. Yeah. <laughs> time was always a concern. How do you get to do uh, the many things you want to do and still, you know, have a, uh, a regular life with your family? So those were, those were challenges. Uh, it was always more challenging when I first got down to Boston in 1991. Uh, we were in the midst of a recession, very little money around. Uh, so uh, we had to cut local aid at that time by 10%. And that was very difficult. Okay, it was difficult for the community and difficult for me to make those sorts of decisions. About 10 years later, we went through another kind of a recession. And, and then there were the good times, too, where you were able to bring certain things back. Like as I mentioned, uh, getting the chapter uh, to money up to where it should be. Now, if you were to give advice to someone who's about to step into adulthood, someone who's graduating high school, um, what would you say to them? Oh, follow what you want to do. Whatever you're going to do in terms of a career, for example, keep in mind that's going to be a large part of it. We'll say if it's an eight-hour workday, that's a third of your life. So you don't want to be doing something that you're absolutely miserable in. You want to be doing something that it's work, but at the same time something you enjoy doing. I was fortunate to be able to do that as both a school teacher and uh, there were down times. <laughs> so even after retiring from state rep after 16 years and after retiring from teaching, you were still heavily involved in town affairs. What were some of the activities you were involved with? Well, I got very involved with the uh, Western Historical Society. Yep. As I said, I was a U.S. history teacher, a social studies teacher. I taught civics and uh, a law class also. I as I was retiring, I, I made a decision to get involved with the Historical Society. From there, I was a member of the board for several years, was the president for a couple of years. But I was more interested in the research part of it. We've done innumerable. Um, I, I actually I had gotten involved with cable TV back in the 90s. I used to have a show called Legislative Update. Wow. And I was, it was, that was on the year from 1994 until I retired in 2008. A woman by the name of Veronica Otto was the one who got me involved in that. Uh, Veronica sadly passed away in, I think it was 2003. But I continued the show, and with that sort of experience, I wanted to continue. I had a, a show here at the, called Around Town. I interviewed people. We went out into the community. I remember going over to the 4-H fair and things such as that. Talked to people who um, were involved in the community, visited certain sites, and I enjoyed doing that. I, I enjoyed doing and working, uh, you know, cable. And I guess you say that's kind of the um, the spotlight, liking to be in the spotlight to a certain extent. And um, but as I was able to take that and use do some things with the historical society. I've done different uh, different. Uh, Cable stories on Graniteville, uh, Parker Village, and Abnasset. I've worked with several people 
uh, within the historical society to do those things. Found out there's a lot of interest in that kind of a thing. So, and I've really enjoyed it. So it's it gives me something to do, and it's a it's something contributing to the community as well. So besides the Westford Historical Society and the Westford Museum, you've also been a Westford Academy trustee for many years too. Mm-hmm. What really brought you into your role as Westford Academy trustee? What inspired you? Well, I've always been attached, even though I taught in Chelmsford, I've always remained attached to Westford Academy. My, my kids grew up, went to uh, the academy, uh, fourth generation of uh, my family. Dad was class of 37. I was class of 66. My kids, 89, 90, and 91, and then my grandkids. Okay, uh, Natalie, Cameron, and TJ all graduated from Westford Academy. So I've been attached. I went to the football games, the basketball games, those sorts of things. Got involved, and I was, it was actually Mickey Crocker, uh, God rest his soul, that Westford icon, who urged me to get involved. And in 1998, I was, I was appointed as a trustee and uh, have been a member ever since. Now, just in case people are a bit confused or students are a bit confused, what exactly is a trustee? Okay. To give you the short version, in the 19th century, secondary education basically was academies. Uh, high schools began to emerge, and by the end of the 19th century, it, was a, it became a requirement that towns have high schools. But to give you an example, Concord Academy, Westford Academy, Chumpsford Academy, Lawrence Academy. Lawrence Academy and Westford Academy in 1792 were both, through the general court, established as academies. And you had to have people in town that were uh, interested in doing that. And it didn't serve just Westford at the time. It served anyone, okay? Many of your trustees, your trustees were the overseers of that academy. When we became a public school in the early part of the 20th century, the trustees actually turned over all of the uh, the building and the duties uh, of hiring and whatnot to um, the school boards, local school boards. The academy, Rodenbush at the time, was sold, I think, for $3,000 in 1928 to the town as the high school. But the Westwood Academy trustees had an endowment, and so... Through that endowment, we were able to give prizes every year, you could say. And they turned into scholarships. Uh, And over the years, different families have contributed their names and the names of people and uh, as scholarships. And that's what we basically oversee an endowment today. A a gift to the community, to the uh, community of Westford Academy for about $80,000 every year. Uh, National Honor Society, we give out books. So, yeah, and as I say, scholarships to some needy students as well. So throughout through your time as trustee, what are some of the different roles you've taken on the board? Well, <laughs> interesting. I've been the president of the trustees twice. Um, I'm president, the vice president of, of the trustees. I've had the role of being part of the archives committee and, and working with uh uh, the other trustees speaking at graduation or other ceremonies where the trustees are involved around town, yeah. And which one of the roles have you found the most rewarding or challenging? Well, it is, it is. I, I wouldn't say challenging. Any of them are, are, are terribly challenging because, as I said, you know, it's it's kind of a thing, it's a rewarding thing because you're able to find, since for the time, there's more responsibility with being uh, the president because you, you help organize the meetings and set the agenda and uh, do a lot of the communicating with other subcommittee members. After having done so much over the years, what what do you think are, are going to be your next steps or plans for the future? Um, <laughs> well, I plan to live another maybe 75 years. <laughs> I like what I'm doing now. It keeps me busy, Sonia, uh, with the activities I have with the, with the Historical Society. I don't think I'll ever run for office again. Uh, I'm, I'm sure of that. And people have asked me to run. I've said, if you can get my, convince my wife, I says, I'll be happy to. But that's not going to happen. But I, I think as long as I keep myself mentally busy through activities like this, uh, the trustees, the, uh, how, the, um, uh, the historical society, 
And, you know, I exercise on a regular basis, play some golf in the summertime. I walk every morning, you know, I, that helps clear my head for the day and things like that. So as a student, I wasn't fully aware we actually had trustees until very recently. So I'm sure there are tons of other students out there who unfortunately don't understand the role that you have in students' lives. So, Mr. Hall, thank you for taking the time to answer my questions and for sharing so much about yourself today. Once more, my name is Sonia, and I'm a summer intern at the Western Museum. Thank you for having me.